Hello, I'm recording this video today to show you my newest toy. So this is a Indian charka. It is a book shaped charka. You can see it's kind of curved on this side and curved there to like imitate the pages, but it folds out. And a little bit of history about the charka, very, very brief from what I understand. <laughs> I've done a bit of research, but it's not my history. It's the history of the Indian continent, especially under British rule, under the British Empire. So when um, India was under the British rule, uh, they there was a, um, a tax or a law put in place to dis kind of discourage uh, the Indian population um, from spinning their own cotton. So cotton grows really well in India, but they wanted to discourage the spinning of it in India. They wanted actually to export all of the cotton to England so it can be run in the mills um, and create jobs and money and then sell it back to the Indian population um, that way. So it was kind of, it was a tax basically to make sure that England got the money and uh, India kind of, you know, it, it, it was, they were a resource. They weren't really, they weren't really considered interested in developing the country. They wanted to develop Britain and Great Britain. So that was what was, uh, it was, uh, it was discouraged to spin your own yarn. And actually, I think it came to the point where it actually became almost illegal. Um, so that's why these small little spinning wheels, this is a spinning wheel, were invented. Um, Gandhi was a big, um, he pushed the idea of spinning your own yarn, becoming independent, but by peaceful means. So spinning your own fiber, spinning your own yarn, and then weaving your own garments was a very peaceful way of um, kind of fighting back against British rule. So they invented these small little book charkas that if you were raided for any reason, you, you didn't have this big spinning wheel that you couldn't hide, like this one over here. It's a bit difficult to hide. So, <laughs> so you could be spinning away, spinning away, be like, oh, the English are coming, and fold it back up, put it in the bookshelf, no one would know. I think that's the general gist of it. If anyone does have more information, please let me know down below and I will update you all on that. So I got this from eTrading Lines, a um, lovely website. It did take a little time, a little time to come because it's coming from India. But also I think I ordered just in the middle of like Diwali or something. So it was um, a Christmas-esque type uh, celebration, big, big celebration for a week. Uh, so things were delayed as they, as they normally are for our holidays. So um, this is the basic charka set. It was $100 and then the American dollars and then I ordered three extra spindles and about 50 Rolags or 100 Rolags or Poonies of cotton just because I didn't know where to get them. So it all came as a kit for about $149. Shipping was about, um, I think it was $73. I think it came to 200 euros around, around 200 euros including shipping, including your Rolags and including extra spindles and the actual handmade charka. A good deal, I think. <gasps> so pretty. I can't remember what finish this is. I can't remember. So it this is the the name on it there. So you can see it's an authentic charka from Warda, India. Gram Siva Mandal. There's too many L's. I'm sorry, I could do it if I thought about it for long enough. So I'm gonna show you how to put it together. There's a lot of bits in this and it did take me a couple of ex excellent videos and I've created a playlist down below so you can have a look because um, they'll probably do it way better than I will. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do now. So I'm going to open it up with the catch just here. And I have some ponies just here. So these are the cotton poonies. Um, and I got a load, there's a ton more. They come wrapped in like Indian newspaper. I love it. I'm just gonna put that there. So we have a large wheel, a smaller wheel, it's called an accelerator. And then you have your spindle. You have, I have three spindles over here. 
This is the spindle that I have been working on. So I'll start from this side. So the large wheel has a little handle. It's an aluminum handle and it attaches on just here. It's quite neat. And there's a little catch that you just catch in there just to attach it in. This little handle is uh, loose and it's a really nice shape for your fingers to hold on to. It's triangular. Now these are connected. So the handle has a um, an angle on it so that when it swings around to the small wheel, it doesn't hit it. It's really well engineered. I do love it. So this is a hemp cord. Um, on the more expensive models, you get a, um, a kind of a polyester cord. So you can take this off, you can oil it, you can clean it down. We'll get to this bit later. So there's a little pulley under here. It's a very small pulley and um, this accelerates the wheel because with cotton you need a very very high twist so you need almost a really huge wheel and a tiny spindle or something like an accelerator. So I'm just going to pop it back on. There we go. There we go. So it should spin freely. Perfect. This part here is for actually holding it steady. So you can pop it on here and I use my foot. I just um, keep it held under my foot. I try a different, couple of different ways to hold it, but it's got a little catch there to just catch onto the edge. So that's nice. Um, so now the spindle, setting up the spindle. It comes with a cord, but I um, I got I, I got a just a piece of cotton. The cord had a little bit of a a hard part on it, and it kept bumping off. So I have heard other people use doubled over sewing thread works as well. So this is your kind of your tension, and this is your spindle. So your spindle has a very long pointy needle. It's got a buffer and it's got this whirl just here. You can see just there. So you pop this up here. This is your holder, your spindle holder, and there's a little kickstand which you can use to hold it upright while you're setting everything up. Little kickstand just there. That's handy. It is on a very, very tight spring. And I'm going to wrap my extra cord around the accelerator wheel. And then if I want to, I think it's, oh, I can't remember. I can never remember if it's clockwise or anti-clockwise. I think it's, anyway, we'll find out. <laughs> so we pop it around. It depends if you're going to do it anti-clockwise or clockwise, if you put it over or under. Twist it that way. I'll leave it like that for the moment. So you can see these cords here, they're, they're, this is actually just a kind of a buffer just to protect um, the yarn, or just to protect the spindle. This, you can move it around so that it doesn't, um, so that it doesn't wear out over time, but you can also replace it with just some normal threads as well. Everything in this kit is very replaceable with other normal stuff. So you just put it down and you put it over. You can see that's just resting over that. That's just resting on top of it. You don't thread the spindle through those. You just level it over. So, and I'm just going to bring up that little kickstand so that then that's under proper tension now. So just tuck those away. And that's how you start spinning, basically. I'm going to just um, give it a little test and see where I am. Yeah. So you are spinning with one hand essentially. So it's a, it's a long draw technique. And I'm currently right at the nubbin of my... You can hear that sound.
and then you go backwards and you spin it onto your spindle. So that is how you put it together. Now, there are a few extra bits in here which are, were a little bit of a mystery, but I figured them out after a while. <laughs> so there's um, two extra spindles over here for when you fill them up, that's great. But you've got these kind of, um, you've got these L-shaped rods. I'm gonna show you what they are now. Now you got this piece here, which is, I'm gonna take this off out of the way actually, I think that'll get in the way. This comes off. And it's got two little pins here and they, those two little pins are going to go onto this top of the accelerator wheel. I'm just going to take off the accelerator. I'm just going to take that off tension. I wonder do I actually because that comes up like that. Yes. Yes that comes out. I'll take that off altogether and these go into the sides. They have little edges here little holes that they all go into. And you're creating a Swift. So it's a skeiner that is actually built into the charka. So you can you can spin your yarn and you have a skeiner inside in the charka itself. It is the most useful, compact item I've ever seen. And of course it's built for people who work. This is a work item, you know. So what you do is you get your your spindle. This is going to be a full spindle, let's pretend. And you pop it down here. You thread this through. I'm just going to flatten this down. There we go. And you're just going to be skeining it. Really? I might skein it the other way because that's not quite. It's magic! It's just so simple. It's very simple. I do love it. And this is when you see if you're if you've put enough twist into your cotton. No, obviously not. <laughs> but that is my little jerka. I think it's adorable. So I'm going to show you some super classy spinning now and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Bye!